What are we talking about today? Something that has blown my mind since I've heard of it. Not just bacteria in the peritoneal pocket, they are finding viruses and now they're thinking it's this super infection of both of those. So stay tuned, we're gonna dive into it. Hello everybody, I am Anna Benner from Visual Dental Hygiene where I make instrumentation and dental hygiene content easier to understand through videos. How many bacteria do you think they have cultured from the oral cavity? Now that means how much of the bacteria do you think that they have grown in a little petri dish in a lab? Answer is 1,200 different bacteria have been grown in a lab. Now what does that mean to us? Well, they actually think that they have cultured only about 50% of the bacteria that's really in the oral cavity. 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. That means that there's still about 50% of bacteria in the oral cavity that has not been cultured. So that means it hasn't been studied and we don't quite know how it works in the oral cavity. That's crazy because I feel like we had a pretty good grasp of what's going on with periodontal disease. In fact, we don't. And there's actually a big piece of the puzzle that is missing. So the latest thought is that some periodontitis infections are actually caused by a super infection. Bacteria in combination with viruses. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. I like you. But you're crazy. So what type of viruses are we talking about? We're actually talking about the herpes viruses. Now there's tons of herpes viruses within the family, but some of them that they have localized in these pockets, subgingival in the peritoneal pockets and also supergingival in the peritoneal plaque that they have seen is going to be herpes simplex 1 virus. They've also seen the herpes meglovo meglacho virus. Herpes seglovo <laughs> Herpes seglovo meglovo <laughs> the herpes cytomegalovirus. And also the Epstein-Barr virus. So let's just talk a little bit about each of those. So the, the HCMV is that it's a herpes virus that affects about 50 to 75% of adult population. I've actually seen some studies that say it's even higher up to 90%. This could be that they are infected with it and have no idea that they even have it. And this virus can lay dormant within the body as well. Now, what are some symptoms that someone might notice? The biggest symptom is GI upset. Now, a lot of people become infected with this when they are children and they have it all the way through adulthood. The other one is gonna be the Epstein-Barr virus, which a lot of you know this as mono, the kissing disease. It's spread through saliva and other bodily fluids. The most common symptom that someone will have with this is hairy leukoplakia. And then we have the herpes simplex virus one. Now that is going to be your cold sores that you'll see outside the face. You'll find no herpes here. Herpes? Not what you said. No, sir. Herpes. One way that they are thinking that viruses are getting into the parallel pocket is by this theory that they have. And I'm going to show you in a little drawing here. So you have the tooth and then you have gingival tissue here. So what they're saying is that we, you get an infection. So we're going to draw the bacteria. We're all very familiar with what happens when bacteria is present. Our body will automatically go into fight mode and want to get rid of that bacteria as soon as possible. So what our body does is it sends our fighter guys, which white blood cells. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw our fighter geyser here that our body is sending. And they're saying that in these white blood cells that this is how the viruses are coming. So they, these white blood cells contain latent viruses. Which they have seen that these viruses can stay dormant in a white blood cell. So they think that when the fighter guys go there, some of them are containing some of the viruses and the viruses will remain dormant in this area 
until a trigger happens. What is that trigger? Some type of way that the host defense is down. That might mean that the host goes down because of smoking, alcohol, they become immunocompromised, whatever it may be. So then when that happens, these guys are no longer in that latent phase where they're just more like that sleeping. They wake up and now they're able to also be in that paradigm pocket. And this is where we get that super infection that happens, where we have viruses in combination with bacteria and they're seeing that this combination happens a lot and this can end up causing severe periodontitis where it will happen a lot quicker okay so we'll end up getting that severe periodontitis they find the virus and the bacteria lots of cytokines in that area which that's going to be something that can help destroy bone and tissue within that area. So this is a theory on how that super infection is happening. Now, how are the viruses actually causing damage and helping that infection get worse? We don't know. So that will be something that they'll more research will need to be done in order to figure out really how are these viruses causing the issue. They're not really sure how that cause and effect is happening right now. What is the research saying? So one study I found was done in 2015. It was a meta-analysis, which if you don't remember what that is, that is the cream of the crop. That is the best of the best as far as research goes. So what this is is that they take tons of studies, they put them together, and they see what do all of these studies say. And based on what they're finding there, they're, that's what we are going to believe and do. With this meta-analysis, so they took 10 studies. Now remember, we're not gonna have thousands of studies to look at because this is a newer topic, but they had 10 studies that they could look at. And with those 10 studies, they found that the Epsom-Barr virus had a significant association with chronic periodontitis as compared to a healthy patient. And what their p-value that they found of this was a p-value of 0 0.001. What does that mean? That means that they had a one in 1,000 chance of being wrong. They also had 10 studies that looked at the HCM virus. And those ones had a significant association with chronic periodontitis as well versus a healthy periodontal pocket. And they found a p-value of 0 0.007. So that means seven out of a thousand chance of being wrong with that statement. Now in dental science, we say a p-value of 0 0.05 is statistically significant. So that means that we have a five out of 100% chance of being wrong, and that is still a great credible source. A study was done in 2019 that tested 70 patients, and they tested the supra gingival plaque and also sub gingival plaque and the two deepest perineal pockets. What they found was that the Epsom-Barr virus was present in 60% of the patients that had moderate to chronic periodontitis versus only being in 8% of the healthy patients. So the Epsom-Barr virus was significantly higher in patients with periodontitis versus the healthy patient with a p-value of 0 0.001. So they had a one in a thousand chance of being wrong with that study. So another study done in 2019, or that was published in 2019, had 89 subjects that were divided into two categories, moderate periodontitis and severe periodontitis. The results showed that the herpes simplex virus 1 was found in 22% of the patients with moderate periodontitis. And also herpes simplex virus 1 was found in 28% of patients with severe periodontitis. So what this study found was that the herpes simplex 1 virus is in fact found supergingival and subgingival in patients with periodontitis, moderate and severe. With one more study to throw into it that studied 30 patients with chronic periodontitis, they found that of those patients, 50% tested positive in the gingival crevicular fluid of four herpes type viruses. The four types of herpes virus, which is herpes simplex 1 and 2, the HCM virus, and the Epsom-Barr virus. So 50% of the patients tested positive for those types of virus, all four of those viruses.
basically, where are we right now? We are at the point where we are just making it known that viruses are another thing, another wrench we're throwing into this crazy, crazy battle that we have, and we thought the battle was just bacteria. But now we're realizing the battle is actually viruses and bacteria. It's a super infection. Breathe. Right now, they do know that viruses are found in periodontal pockets of moderate to severe periodontitis. What they do not know is what are these viruses doing and how are they contributing to the disease? That is something that we'll find out as they do more and more research. And no, it could take years before we know this. I mean, how many years have we been knowing bacteria is our cause? And we still aren't fully understanding how periodontitis is happening. So stay tuned. I just wanted to make sure that you're in the loop and understand that now it is not only bacteria, it is viruses as well. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will try to post videos once a week. Please share this video like crazy because we need to spread the word that viruses are also something that we are now working with and that there is more and more research coming out of this every day. Also post in the comments below if you had an idea that viruses maybe were an issue and what do you think about this? Love you all, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.